There we go. There we go. I need y'all to get excited. I'm so excited. We're going to talk about Jesus. That's awesome. He is the redeemer of all things. I'm so, ex- oh, I'm so excited. My name is Gavi, in case you don't know me. And we are in our second week in Spiritual Foundations. This is a series. This is actually a really big deal. We've really never done this, like really continued with the series. And it is so that you want to come back so you can hear the next part and then the next part. And then we're going to continue on and on. Um, and I have the great privilege to teach the second part. So here is uh, Discovering God. Just in that alone, that's a word. (laughs) Just discovering God. Continuing to know that sometimes we feel like, oh, we found it. We figured it all out. But in reality, it is in our constant search for God that we find deeper meaning in life and deeper meaning within ourselves. And it is in that search that we find more love, that we find more compassion and empathy within ourselves. But it's a constant thing that we have to pursue. We have to pursue him in all aspects of our life. You know, this is such a beautiful space to do that, but this isn't the only space to do that. Everywhere that you go, every person that you meet, everything that you encounter in life is divinely ordained by God himself. But it is only in our awareness to what is happening in front of us that we are able to experience his presence. Amen? Amen. So today, we're going to talk a little about how we can discover God. So I really love this quote that I have here. Uh, Well, actually, this is me. (laughs) God, I am willing. (laughs) I love this one. I I came up with this one. (laughs) Um, And that's really what it is. You have to have an open heart. You have to have an open heart to receive God. You really do. God is always working in and through us, but we have to have the desire, right? We have to have that desire to want to receive and experience God. If we have a block, if we are not open, it's not that God isn't working, it's that we're going to miss how God is working in our lives. If we aren't aware to what is happening, we're just going to miss it. And a great way to do this, uh, Meister Eckhart had said, be willing to be a beginner every single morning. I really love the idea of this because how often do we wake up and our troubles are just overwhelming us? Everything that we've experienced, everything that we're going through, that's the only reality that we know. But we also know that every day God has provided us a new day a new beginning, full of grace, full of redemption, and we're able to forgive and release what's happened in the past. But it's important to think of it as a beginner every day, almost like a childlike faith, a childlike mentality of what is new? What new wonder is God going to show me today? Does that sound fun? Yeah? Are we doing good today? Yeah, okay, good. I love this because as a teacher, so I teach yoga. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Gabby. And I really started my walk with God in yoga. So a very unique way because it's a Hindu tradition. And as a teacher, we teach our students that every time that you step on your mat, it's a new beginning. Everything that has happened before is wiped away. And you're able to start fresh and new. And truly, it's a remembrance of who you are at your core. Because all of our humanness, all the mistakes that we make, our personality, that's the fun part of our avatar. But now that we're here in our spiritual home, let's talk a little bit more for real. Our soul is who we are. And our soul is not tainted by the world. Our soul is not tainted by what we've done or what we have not done. Our soul is pure and always connected to God, but it is us who forget. And God just wants us to remember. But we can't remember if our voice in our head is too loud. And that little voice is usually called our ego. Ooh. (laughs) And you know what? I always like to remind everyone that the ego is not a bad thing. It's here to protect us. It is here to help us. But we need to also have discernment. When is it the ego and when is it God talking to us? And how do we actually cultivate and understand the difference between the two? 
sometimes when you start to have crazy faith, you start to feel a little crazy. You're like, is that really Jesus talking or is that just me in my head? But when you really start to cultivate this relationship, you can distinguish the two. And this desire is so strong in your heart that now you're pulled to it. It's like this gravitational pull and you just can't say no anymore. Amen? So I want us to go through these five things that I put here that I think can really help you. And it's going back to the God I am willing. I want this to be not just a mental state of being, but a heart state of being. So it's going to start with I will worship, I will obey, I will serve, I will remember, and I will receive. <laughs> So the first one, who was at our concert? Uh, oh my gosh. So Andrea, we're sitting there and she's like, I don't think the concert has stopped. I do not think the concert has stopped since then. There is nothing more beautiful than to worship for our Lord. There really is no better way to really express all that he's done for us. I need to worship because without it, I can forget that I have a big God inside of me. Big, big God. And live in fear. I need to worship because without it, I can forget his calling and begin to live in a spirit of self-preoccupation. I need to worship because without it, I lose a sense of wonder and gratitude and plod through life with blinders on. I need worship because my natural tendency is towards self-reliance and stubborn independence. We have to worship because it's the only reasonable response to the gift of grace. <laughs> It is the only, worship is the only reasonable response for the gift of grace. What happens is that we don't realize that God really gives us grace every single day. That that is our inherent right. That is our gift as his children. And when you understand that grace is in you, it's always around you, it's always provided for you, then you have no other option but to worship. You have to worship him. And, you know, it's taken me a few years, I'm not going to lie, to worship the way that I worship now. But I want to speed through that for you guys. <laughs> speed through it. Don't wait as long as it took me. Because the Holy Spirit will come in that moment. And you'll be able to feel him. Will you feel when we're all singing together and really like singing at the top of our lungs and I think I sound like Sasha and Milena when we all know I don't, but I swear I do. I mean, I'm here like, yes, Lord. But that feeling that comes over you, you can feel that all the time. I don't know if you guys heard a teaching that I did, a walking prayer, but it could be a living worship as well. Life is a living worship. How many of my friends here love sports? Really? You're going to tell me you're not a big fan, a big sports fan? And when your team wins, what do you guys do? Right? Some of y'all even take your shirts off. Some of y'all get crazy. And then, my ladies, what do you guys do when Beyonce comes on? You guys get crazy. Right. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Jesus died for us. I'm not trying to say that sports aren't fun and that Beyonce isn't amazing. I love all of it. But what have they really done for us to the magnitude of what Jesus has done for us? Because of him, we are redeemed. We are made new. We are full of his love. We are who we are because of what Jesus did for us. So when that song comes on, when you feel it in your heart, when you're outside and you see that sunrise, worship him. This is the house of God, so it's a beautiful place to worship him. But the universe 
is the world of God, the universe of our king, the king of the universe. Worship all of him. When I was in Costa Rica, I was lucky enough that I got to go for New Year's. And on the 31st, we went to this beautiful beach in Tamarindo. And I got to witness uh, the, sun, the sun went down, the sunset. And I'm just standing there, and I'm, I think a lot of you guys know me. It's not that I'm not an emotional person. I have emotions. I don't think I cry. <laughs> I just don't cry as much as maybe some of my friends do in public. Right, So this was a unique thing for me because as the sun came down, I was overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit and I just couldn't stop crying. And I couldn't stop crying because I felt the Lord tell me, the chapter is done. Last year is done. Don't stay there. Move forward with me. Move forward with me. Let's walk in forward motion. There is a whole book that I want to write with you but you have to walk with me. And a beautiful way to do that is to worship every step. Because especially in the bad ones, the ones where you really feel like you're in that valley, God is there in the trenches with you. And if you understand that he's there, that when you get to the mountaintop, oh my God, hallelujah, for real. Because you know who was with you the whole time. It's a big God, my friends, a big God. And I want to remind you of this because there is nothing that you cannot do with him. You can do anything with God. All of your desires, he placed in your heart. You just have to have the discernment to know, is it the desire in your heart or is it the desire of your ego? When they are of our minds, they may happen, but they may not if they're not your purpose. But when you are aligned with God, Everything starts to move forward in alignment. And that's when we should really understand that our worship is it's just so special for us to do. So I will worship. I hope that I can encourage you guys to really worship all of your days, no matter what you're experiencing. The next one is I will obey. Now this word, the obedience word, especially our heart way because we're very spiritual. We don't like it. We don't like to be told what we need to do, right? Because yes, you technically don't need to do anything to receive God's love. That is very true. But to have a relationship with God, there are certain steps that we have to take. Think about any relationship that you have in life. If you don't cultivate it, if you don't water it, if you don't listen to it or to your person, the relationship cannot grow. So I will obey. And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. And as you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. We always talk about God in the sense of love. So when he is asking things of it, of us, it is in the form of love. It is because he loves us that he asks things from us. And we all know when we feel it in our hearts or in our gut that God is asking something of us. But we usually turn the other cheek or we turn around or we act like we didn't hear it or we say next year. How often do you hear God telling you something and we tell him, all right, on this date. I'll do it in like a month or maybe a year, you know? And he's like, no, why are you waiting? I'm telling you now because you're ready now. I don't even remember how many years ago this was. Maybe it was like five years ago. So I've been with Heartway, I think now six years. And it's taken me time to get to a place where I speak with this type of conviction, where my faith has gotten to this level and my relationship with God has gotten this strong. And I'm only so excited to see how far it'll go. But five years ago, let's say I was sitting most definitely in the back, not wanting anyone to see me. And I had a vision. And I had a vision of myself up here speaking. And I promise you, I saw it and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I was like, yeah, right. What am I going to say up there? What? No way. Who's going to give me a mic? Like, that's insane. And I wasn't even teaching yoga at the time. So I didn't even have, you know, the practice of teaching. 
right? And in that moment, that seed was planted. But what I did continue to do was show up. I continued to show up for myself, for God, and for me, that meant showing up to church. I know that sometimes it's hard for us to find time to be here, to find time out of our busy days to really sit with God, to meditate with God, to pray with God. But I promise you that it is in that time that you take that you really start to cultivate this relationship with him. And when you're cultivating the relationship with him, in return, you're understanding yourself so much more. So many of us walk blindly, and we just become what Instagram tells us to become, or who the world thinks we need to be, or who our parents think we need to be, instead of understanding who God needs us to be. And God's telling you. I want you guys to think of God. You know, a lot of people like to personify God, and it makes them feel good, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do whatever feels best for you. But let's just, for fun, think of God as an energy source, right? And there's this hub of energy, and when two or more come together, we always know that God is especially present. The more people that come together to worship God, whether that's with our voice, with our stillness, with our breath, with just our presence, this portal expands. And now there is a stream of consciousness that is coming down ready for us to take. What is this stream of consciousness? It is our power. It is our strength. It is our love. It is our understanding that there is something greater than us that actually cares for us. It is the reminder that we are not alone. But if we don't obey God when he tells us to show up somewhere or to take time or to sit with him, we're missing the opportunity to fill ourselves up with the God conscious energy that he is. This is the supreme source of the universe. He makes everything go round. Tap in, my friends. Tap in. And the most beautiful way to think of this is as a devotion. Be so devoted to God that you don't put anything before him. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love my friends here. But it's true. When you put God first, Everything else will follow. He is our father. You don't think that he wants the best for us? Those of you that have children, you know, I don't have kids, but I have, you know, my best friend's child. I have my cousin's kids. I have children that I'm getting a lot closer to. I only want the absolute best for them. I want to fill them with more love than I ever received or that I believe that I received. But the only way to do that is by me putting God first. If I put God first, everything will follow. You know what happens is we don't want to obey because we want to control. And we want to be the ones who decide who's in our lives and who isn't in our lives. But what if for just a moment we said, you know what, God, if this person doesn't serve me, remove them. Show me. If this job doesn't serve me, remove it. God, what do you want me to do? The problem is, do you really want the answer? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There was many times I didn't want the answer, but now I'm not scared. And you know what I've practiced? Because I, I tend to pray a lot right before bed because I want to give him thanks for everything that he's given me for that day, but I also want to reflect on what I need help with because he is the one who helps me. And so this other night I was praying over something and I started to get this feeling in my heart. Maybe it's called anxiety, I don't know. I, don't <laughs> I started to feel this like anxious feeling and I was just like, maybe I am afraid to lose what I'm praying about. And I just kept repeating it over and over and over again until that feeling went away. And then I was no longer scared. We don't have to be scared to obey God. He gives us the free will because he wants us to choose. 
But I promise you, my friends, his will will be done. And it is with spiritual wisdom that we understand that we should just listen on the first time. And then we don't have to keep trying. <laughs> I will serve. Do one thing at a time, and while doing it, put your whole soul into it, into the exclusion of all else. Whatever God is asking you to do, big or small, put your whole heart into it. It is in our service that we get to show God. Let me say it better. We're all walking each other home, right? And when we serve, we are actually in our act expressing who God really is. When you give that smile to someone, when you sit with someone, when you're serving here, greeting, giving the coffee, helping the kids, we need help for the kids. If you guys like kids, if you don't like kids, please come help the kids. I promise you, God will repay you. You know, actually, I was watching a service and it was so funny. He was like, you know, he, this is a pastor. And the lady was telling him, she's like, she's like, Pastor, I've been asking for my husband, but uh, he seems to not want to be anywhere to be found. And he's like, okay, okay, I understand. He goes, well, what do you hear God telling you? He's like, oh, he's telling me to go serve in this department, but you know that's not really for me. And he's like, well, what if your husband's in that department and you're not listening? You know how often God tells us to go a certain way and we don't listen? We don't know the gift that God has for us. And sometimes he hides it. He hides it because I also think that God likes to have fun. Let's be honest. Our God likes to have fun. He is a creative. He is a comedian. He is an artist. You know, so he, he doesn't want this to be boring. He wants you to really discover him. Discover the greatness of God in all of your life. And service is such a beautiful way for us to do it. What happens, though, a lot of times is that when we do have Jesus in our hearts and we really, you know, wake up to the, to the grandiose of God, right? So just all that he can do, then we try to save people. It's not our job to save anyone. That's God's job. What is our job is to be present where he wants us so that his presence can work in and through us. That's how we share Jesus' message, by just being loving. Walk like him. You don't have to tell or teach anybody anything. Just be a vessel for him to work through. Be a loving hand, a loving smile a shoulder to lean on. I promise you, my friends who have known me for a very long time, especially the ones who really, really know me, they always knew that I was a good person and that you know, I had a loving heart. But even now, they're still amazed at what God has done in my life. And I, don't, I hope I haven't ever sat with them and told them, you need Jesus in your life or you're going to hell, because I don't believe that necessarily but they've seen it with the actions that I've done in my life. They've seen how I've transformed myself, how God has been able to transform me. Just walk in faith, walk with him, and he'll do all the work. <laughs> oh, you know, the next one here, oh, I'm excited about this one, I will remember. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God. But what happens is we forget we forget all the pieces that he's been placing in our lives, and we can't see the full picture yet. I'm going to give you a story. You guys, we saw Melody up there, right? A lot of you guys know her. If you don't know her, she's our executive pastor. She really runs our ship. And she's just such a loving 
truly a woman of God. I met her 14 years ago in college when we were partying in our lost days, right? We didn't know, <laughs> we didn't know anything. But we were discovering ourselves and that's okay. I had no idea why she was placed in my life then. I thought she was just my college friend that we were gonna party and have a good time. 14 years later, she's here at this church. Now, mind you, I was here. She was here first. She was serving in kids for like a little bit. This was a long time ago, probably when we first started. And then she left. All of a sudden, she sees on social media that I am promoting Heartway and that I'm a part of Heartway. And she's like, the Gabby that I knew, I don't know if she knew who Jesus was. <laughs> you know, she, she, I'm sure that's what was going on through her head. And, you know, thankfully, she reminded me of this story because I didn't remember. One day, I called her up, and I was like, hey, could we go to coffee? I really need to talk to you. So we go to coffee, and we're sitting down, and apparently, I just start telling her, look, you need to come to Heartway. We need you here. You need to be a part of this. What we're doing here is so amazing. Like, my life has been transformed because of this place. And I really believe that. I attest a lot of who I am to this place. I was really healed here. Um, and so I don't even remember this story, which is just showing you that God will work through you if you're open to it. And it's not really for you to remember. It was actually for her to remember. And in that moment, she joined back and she came into Heartway and then she left again. And then <laughs> she was like, nah, it's not ready. You guys aren't ready for me. So she left. And, um, and then, so this was the second time that she's left. Now... I get this conviction again, and I call her. I'm like, you need to come back. I, we need, I need you here. We need you here. And I'm not really that type of person, to be honest. You know, this has always been my safe space. So if I ever invite somebody here, it's because, you know, I do want them to experience heart weight, but not necessarily because I want them to come think that we're hanging out. Like, this is for you. My family doesn't come, not because they don't love it, but... It's for me. You feel, you feel what I'm trying to say? Like, I've always come here for me. But for some reason, this girl, I needed her to be here. But it wasn't me. It was God. God needed her to be here. And I called her back. And on this third time, now she's the executive pastor. And she's guiding us and helping us and really bringing us back on our way. And I forgot about all of these things. And then I started to look back as this new year started. Remember I told you about at the beach. So we're at the beach and she's there with me and Danny's there too. And also like just even who your best friends are when you look at like how God places people in your lives. So I'm there crying. The Holy Spirit's talking to me. I'm looking at her. I'm looking at Danny. I'm looking at the ocean and I'm just like, God, I, am I, you really have a, a big purpose for me, don't you? And maybe for some of you guys, it's obvious. Maybe you look at me and you already see all that I'm capable of. But I'm human too. And sometimes I struggle with believing what I'm capable of, right? And it's awesome to have friends that can mirror who we really are in God. And in that moment, I started to remember all, everything that God did. Everyone that he removed, that I cried about that I was so sad that now they're not a part of our community or a part of my life, okay? Then I thought about how now he's replacing certain people and moving certain pieces, and now all of a sudden, I can see more of the puzzle. Now I start to see a little bit more of the picture. I'm starting to have more clarity because I can hear God speaking. I'm no longer thinking that I'm crazy because I'm having these God moments because that happens too. I'm no longer doubting that God is working. I'm starting to believe. I'm starting to remember. A lot of you guys, maybe some of you know, I see a lot of new faces, which is so amazing. Um, but my journey started a very unique way. Uh, I actually went to jail and <laughs> I'm, I'm a very interesting human. So I, like mo most people, right, they would go to jail and think their whole life was over. I cried for like hours when I got locked up. And then I woke up, grabbed the phone, you know, when it was my turn, and I called my parents. Yeah, because you had turns, you know, you couldn't just like pick up the cell phone. 
But I picked up the phone, you know, and it was my turn. And I called my parents, and my mom's hysterically crying. My dad's like, Betty, see that? Calm down. Like, we need to listen to her. She's calling us, right? And I promise you, I told my parents, God wants me here, so I think we all just need to surrender and let go, and I know that I'll be okay. But just give me time to connect with God. And that's all I kept saying to them. And my mom was just like, what are you talking about? Like, and then my dad is just listening, you know, like, okay, I guess. That sounds kind of good. <laughs> right? He's like, at least she's not, you know, freaking out too much. And that's how my journey started. But if I didn't pay it, if I didn't surrender to God, I wouldn't have experienced him. Those nine months that I was there, he worked and worked and worked. But I really said, God, I am willing. I am willing to receive you. I knew that there was a reason that I was there. I knew that it wasn't because I'm such a bad person or I made such a horrible mistakes. We all make mistakes. And a lot of us don't get caught, okay? You know, that's the truth. We all make mistakes. But for some reason, God wanted me there in that time. And now I can stand here and remember. If I didn't remember that, I couldn't see all that God did in my life. And he's done so much, and I'm so grateful. But it's in the remembrance that we understand how powerful God is. And it's in the remembrance that we can deal with or have patience with the unknown. It's more beautiful that way, I promise you. It's so much more beautiful to not know and to trust and to let him reveal it. Because when you do stand on that mountaintop, I swear you're going to sing hallelujah every day. <laughs> and ultimately I will receive to receive God's love we must let him love us we must abandon every effort to keep him at a distance or every effort to control the way he touches and transforms us we have to let him come close into the deepest parts of who we are and change everything with his love. If you can't receive his love, you can't give his love. It all starts with us. If we don't believe that we are worthy of grace, then we can't give grace. It all starts with our relationship with God first. And I really encourage you to take time to work through those inner demons that are stopping you from allowing you to receive all of God's love. I want to remind you that God has never left your side, which means he saw it all. He was there through it all. You're not hiding anything from him. You're delusional. <laughs> we're very delulu out here we are because god was already there just be honest with yourself and believe it's true and believe i mean think about it it's like us trying we're trying to lie to ourselves we know what we've done but also understand why you did it why you went through what you went through Sometimes we really don't know any better. Sometimes it's our conditioning. It could just be our circumstance in the society that we live in. But God already knows, and he's already forgiven you. He's just waiting for you to forgive yourself. God is not here to shame you. You know, I was really thinking the other day, and I was like, you know, why is it that shame is such a big thing in religion? Why do people use that to try to change people? Because to be honest, shame, well, maybe it's my personality, isn't going to stop me from doing what I want to do. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I guess a little bit, but my will will stop me from doing what I don't want to do. And I really believe that at times God doesn't intervene with certain things because he wants you to go through it so that the next time that it comes up, you don't want to do it. No one is shaming you into not doing it. He is reminding you that there is a better way. 
that there is a greater way to live and to experience life. I'm not trying to convert anyone into anything other than believing that love exists, that love is real, and that with God, anything is possible. If you, in your heart, really believe that you can't be changed, talk to Jesus. If you really believe in your heart that you are not worthy, that you've done too much to be forgiven for, talk to Jesus. He will redeem you. He will change you from your heart because that's who we are, our souls. He made us in his image with his power. Connect. And if you're struggling to find ways to connect, come to Heartway. <laughs> we will remind you. We will remind you of how great you are because I see it in you. God sees it in you. And it is a blessing to be in a room filled with love, to be diverse enough, and to still say, I love you. I don't have to understand what you understand. I just have to know that you love love and that I love you and that you can love me despite anything. That's all we have to do, guys. Walk in love. Let's receive his love and continue to walk forward and to walk hand in hand with God because he will guide us and he will lead us. Do you guys believe that today? Yes. Amen. Let's all bow our heads so I can pray for you guys. God, we are so willing. We are so willing to receive your love. God, we are here listening to you, devoted to you, ready to obey. God, we want to worship you every moment of our day. We want to witness all the beauty, all the wonders. We want to experience it all with you. We understand that you are not only at the mountaintops, but in the valleys as well. God, we thank you for protecting us, for divinely guiding us, for removing what is no longer serving us, and for moving in what is needed. God, we trust you, and we love you, and we praise you all of our days. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you all so much. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Don't forget, we have a big party next week. This is a big deal, guys. Like Atina said, we didn't know we would get here. So come celebrate, bring a friend. And if you have someone that you don't like, bring them too. We will change them. <laughs> Amen, guys. Have a great day.